Ewan, Ewan has some questions for me. So while he's doing that, you can put some questions in the chat as well. How did you take care of your mental health um, for all the experiences and stories you shared? Whew, that's a heavy one. The question was, how did I take care of my mental health through a lot of the experiences that I've shared? I think the default answer for a lot of Arcadia students is that we end up relying a lot on our friends. I think sometimes maybe to an unhealthy degree, but that's usually the most available place that we can uh, con converse and connect with people, right? So I connected with a lot of people when speaking and debate, and then I created Quill, for example. And in particular with these couple stories, it helped with me having a whole bunch of people, who, a bunch of friends who I can connect with in SCR. So I wasn't just alone by myself doing all these emails and doing all these projects, but I was out there with people like Lawrence, um, writing these emails and making sure that we connected and shared each other's stories. And that was one way. But yeah, it's been pretty difficult because like I said, I had like um, nightmares for about two or three weeks after that about being confronted by administration. Um, <laughs> How did those nightmares, wait, wait. You know what? just it, sit there in the desk? No, I was like, no, 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 no. Um, just had hard, the main thing was that I had a hard time sleeping. Because I was, it's not really like fear, it's more like anger. I felt angry about what happened. I felt anger about maybe I could have done more in an improving situation. It's a lot of that to prevent me from sleeping, like I was kind of overthinking a little. But in terms of the mental health stuff, uh, friends helped a lot. Um, and yeah, I would say that um, seeking, seeking like mental health, if you have the insurance to cover it, is also a good help too, because um, during that time, before that, I was seeking therapy, and not for any particular reason, but because I thought it would be a good thing to do since I'm in Arcadia High School. So that ended up being very helpful, and I learned a lot of coping mechanisms for that. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't look like we have any uh, questions in the chat. Hey, let me make this a Q&A. All right. Let's go, Ewan. I'm just improvising. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. That's why That's why you're in Congress, dude. You, you make up the questions on the spot. No, I don't. Like, I, I ask questions like two cycles before I actually ask them. Oh man. Well, you know, but you, you, you still okay. You know, fine. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, I just think like mm -hmm. in your speech. Uh -huh. Started with, uh, like, uh, what makes you so passionate about all of this? Like, I feel like not a lot of people would go through all the trouble that you did. Um, you know, sacrificing your quote unquote. Um, blood, sweat, and tears or something. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, like, well, why would you do it? Why would I? Okay. So, in case you can, can in case uh, you can hear. Oh, no, trust me. I'm very... You're very loud? Okay. Yeah. Um, why would I sacrifice? Oh, man. Well, okay. Back when I was a little child. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. But I'll start with a little brief instruction that. So, as, as I mentioned in my speech, I'm Christian. And... I very much believe that God welcomes everyone, no matter of your sexuality, race, gender identity, um, no matter where you're from, no matter what experiences you have, no matter what your neurodivergent. Know, and I believe that justice within the church and within Christianity is essential to someone who's trying to become a Christian or someone who's following Jesus. So for me, it was kind of a mixture of that. And then the experience of every single day, seeing like my fellow peers stressed out, not knowing how intellectually wonderful they are, not knowing how brilliant they are. Like, to be honest, many of the students at KD High School do things that most of the country cannot even, like, grasp. Like, I'm sure we probably do some things that more adults have done in their whole entire lives. And we are definitely, as I said in my video two years ago, we are definitely not regular high schoolers. So, it was hard for me to just go through all that myself, go through Arcadia High School myself, and then see my peers constantly going through the same things that I do, being constantly stressed out over things that like, if you think about are really so minuscule, and judging themselves and other people so harshly on grades and academic things, things which are so like finite in the long term. And it got to a point where like, I know for a lot of people, including myself, we began to define our self-worth, our innate worth of who we are as people based off of grades, based off of academics. And it, it took a lot of help for me to get out of that, a lot of friends, mentors, and family. But in terms of like why I got into this specific stuff, why I felt compelled to make a video, um, and why I felt compelled to do all these projects, my first video came after Dylan Tran incident, of course, which 
there's a lot of medium articles and a lot of other people who can elaborate better than I can. But to me, it was a pattern that I felt like was too common, not just in our school, but in America. The fact is that schools often aren't equipped to deal with cases of sexual abuse or sexual harassment. And this is something contrary to what we expect from Arcadia, which is not only in a fairly affluent community, but it's supposed to have the resources and tools in order to protect students from these horrible, horrible crimes. So there was a part of me that was very, very outraged by that, by kind of how false that image of Arcadia being a prestigious, wonderful, and uh, oh, nothing could go wrong in school. But the later stuff that came along with it was kind of a continuation of that. Like I wanted to see improvements in my school. I wanted to see things actually improve. I wanted to see things actually change for better. And I was really frustrated by how little that can actually be done. How many miss how much administration and how many people told me to say no or just dismiss me or all of that stuff. And you know, ultimately led up to that Google Meet. But ultimately I still feel like this is an essential part of me being confronted. Um, doing all these things in something that I believe is right, something that I believe is just, something that I believe, you know, would that I, I would not be complete without. And yeah, it's been it's been a long road. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Alright. Yep. One more Next one. Okay, well, so just as many questions as you got. Like, We're gonna be here for a while. Q and A. Oh god. Okay, uh... Don't kill yourself, dude. I'm good. Uh, so like... Honestly, give you, can you give us like an update on like how the organiz organizations you mentioned in your speech mm, okay. um, are doing right now, specifically campus reform? Okay, yeah, campus reform's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Well, well, I mean, okay, you, you kind of have to understand the nature of like high school organizations, which I do admit takes a while to comprehend. Is that innately we are only at Arcadia High School for like what four years, and that's a lot less compared to some of most of our teachers and most of the administration and most other like long-time faculty. So given that, like, the organizations that we have are nearly volatile, also because leadership changes every year. I mean, if you think about it, leadership changing every year makes an organization nearly unstable. Because if you think about it, every single like successful stable organization has at least like four year or five year terms for executive members. So there's no like long-term like stability in terms of organizations. So after the spring elections, we actually did have a lot of momentum because we got a lot of Sunrise people to help us out. And we were very impassioned to do a lot of things that would connect clubs in the 2021-2022 school year. But I realized that we were able to do a lot of things online because we were in an online space. So when we came back in person, and, we were, and I was particularly hit with college apps, um, it kind of damp it heavily dampened my ability to be able to like coordinate everything. Oh yeah, it's still recording. Yeah, I know. Um, to coordinate everything and to make sure that like uh, we were getting stuff done and, and to communicate because <laughs> I was kind of underestimating how much work it would be to do all of the SCR stuff. So ultimately I had to drop it. And that's kind of something I'm, I, I, I was a bit frustrated about, but ultimately now like I had to focus on my college applications and that became a priority for me. So essentially SCR is effectively dead at this point. But I do appreciate the people who were in it, who helped along, and we did get a lot of things done of what we could have. Um, now our organization, Sunrise Arcadia. Sunrise Arcadia, um, if you don't know, was a organization that is kind of like a branch of the larger Sunrise movement. Um, they, they, they focus mainly on environmental activism, but Sunrise Arcadia in particular focuses on um, homelessness activism, providing services to them, trying to make sure that our city is taking care of them, making sure that they don't get pushed around by police very often. Like if you, if you really look into like the law that we have in a lot of places, like you can see a lot of them are made to be like anti-homeless and to like actively put people in prison, which is not a social benefit at all. So um, right now that's what they're doing. They, they did support a tiny shelter project in 2021, which unfortunately didn't get passed, but right now they're just doing what they can to help out the homeless population in Arcadia. Uh, I think Sydney Chang, is the person to contact if you want to get more involved with that. But it's still pretty active, but it's a lot more low-key than it was in 2021. But yeah. Um, the last organization I mentioned, ACYC. Yeah. Did you mention ACYC? Did I mention ACYC? Yeah. No. We, it was I didn't like, mention it. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it anyways. It was like one line. Because <laughs> I, have, I, have chair, I, have, I have Vice Chairman Ewan Law around with me. Okay. So uh, Ewan over here is the Vice Chair of our KG Civic Youth Council, also known as ACYC which is uh, basically an organization, a youth advocacy organization. So we connect, not we, I'm not in it anymore, but 
Um, these high schoolers from Arcadia High School connect with the city. They connect with Dominic Lazzarado, who's the district manager. They connect with city council members in order to kind of promote an agenda that supports the youth. And um, it's been, like a lot of high school organizations, it's been like kind of, it, it can be unstable at times, but they've done a lot of good work. Um, Becky Chen, who was the chair last year, was did an incredible job during the years that she was a uh, chairwoman. I know, dude. And you and over here is a vice chair. Um, so currently, um, they didn't. Their application session passed. It was actually this past spring. So if you want to apply or get involved, you have to apply next spring as well. But it's a very good organization. Um, and right now, do you want to give a preview into your upcoming project or not? No, because we have a question. Okay. Chat. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll move on, but ECYC is incredible. Um, you can ask me more about that later. Okay, so from John Laszlo, why didn't the Tiny, Insh Tiny Shelter Initiative pass? It got halted, right? It got halted, but yeah. basically, um, a lot of politics is like, you shelve things, and you say that we're, we're going we're gonna to put you aside for now, and, never, and then you never come back. I don't it. think they're doing it anymore because of the resistance. Yeah, so that um, brings me up to speed. So I'll just talk briefly about the solution, because the whole entire story is very, very long. But essentially, um, unfortunately, Arcadia does not like homelessness. <laughs> like, the thing is that no one likes homelessness. No one wants to see people homeless, right? But the solutions that people somehow bring up, that are often brought up to a forefront, are kicking them out, preventing them from going anywhere, building those like stupid like little bumps inside of like benches in order to prevent homeless people from like sleeping on them and like that doesn't actually help solve homelessness that just moves the problem to other cities that doesn't actually reduce the amount of people who are homeless on the streets so the tiny shelter initiative when we thought about it would be some kind of minor step to help people get access to services but unfortunately a lot of people were vehemently opposed to that because they had some kind of conception that somehow tiny shelters would reduce property value, even though it was like on a very different part of Arcadia, nowhere near all of the mansions and houses. And a lot of other people believe that, oh, they would bring crime, they would bring drugs, all of like the stock arguments that you hear about homelessness that literally like... Oh, they're going to bring more homeless people. Yeah, or they're going to bring more homeless people, which literally do not solve anything. So, um, that segment of the population who I have to point out are kind of like a vocal minority, made their voices like very much heard to the city council members and all the city council members ended up voting abstain and shelving the project to the side which effectively means that like it's not going to happen um but to talk about funding because you would mention it is that actually this was a project that um la county was passing around the cities la county was, pass was passing around funding to cities if they would have tiny shelters and they would connect them to non the nonprofit organization which is running it as well as money from the county so Essentially, like, Arcadia kind of, like, w was being kind of stupid with this because they just lost a whole bunch of funding towards this project in the first place to deal with, like, the homelessness issue, which, of course, has been going on. But essentially, like, I'm, I'm pretty disillusioned about Arcadia's position on homelessness because it's not constructive. It's not actually helping people get off the streets. It's just, like, making the problem go somewhere else. Anyways, sorry <clears throat> about that. All right, next question. <laughs> I forgot all my questions. Oh, you forgot my questions? No, 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 no. Okay. Okay, no, 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 I remember. Okay, so right. basically, like, we're still, like, going back to your speech, right? Like, mm -hmm. basically, before you, like, went on this whole, like, odyssey... Of, <laughs> odyssey? <laughs> oh, yeah, before you went on this, like, whole journey with, you know, uh, accountability and stuff, uh -huh. like, what, uh, like, what did, what, like, let's say you had, like, all the knowledge you have right now, what would, what would you have done differently? Oh, the big brain knowledge I have right now. Oh man. Oh god. Honestly, like, alternative question if it's too hard. Like, what if you had an extra two years? Like, would you do something? Oh god. Like, I actually, okay, here's the thing. Two extra years of, like, AP Calc and stuff. On a personal level, I was just so ready to get out of RTD High School. <laughs> like, I say that, like, a lot of the students don't want to just leave and want to actually work to make things constructive. And that's true. But by the time you reach your senior year, you've just seen too much, like, how things are mismanaged, how things are inefficient, how things are not morally done right. And that makes you want to leave because you, don't, you, can't, you know you can't do stuff about it. So, um, for me, if I had the knowledge I had now, like, I would have been a lot more cautious, but I probably would have done things, like, a lot more, a lot, a lot better. Because I was basically the linchpin in SCR, 
I was holding things together, and that's like it was kind of unsustainable actually because I was mostly just running a lot of things. Not to say that my other SCR peers were, weren't helping as well, but I was like leading an agenda, doing all that stuff as well. Um, I, I I would not want to emerge our TD. I'm sorry. I'm so ready for to go to Pitzer College. Um, but in terms of like the knowledge, like I reacted during that time with each of these things with things that I saw were pertinent to me at that time with the knowledge that I had when I was like in sophomore year, junior year. And I don't regret many of those. I don't regret like all of those actions that I did because I did with knowledge I had at that time. So I can't speak for myself if I had that knowledge back then, or or what I would do differently because like. There are so many circumstances during that time, like the coronavirus, geez, Dylan Chan's like arrest, um, you know, us me being confronted by vice principals I cannot expect, or like really know how they really went about. So I reacted the best I could during that time. Yeah. All right. Um, keep putting your questions in the chat. Um, you were just here asking more questions, but. Um, yeah, I really appreciate getting this time to talk more about all of this stuff that I have not been able to talk to, talk about for the past couple of years. Vent session. Vent session, dude. Honestly, man. Honestly. Yeah. What I'm thinking is that we'll upload this part separately because it's a lot more casual than my video. We'll, we'll, we'll upload this separately from um, the speech. Is the, yeah. think it's the recording? Like, yeah, the thing is still recording. I think so, yeah. I keep forgetting my questions. <laughs> keep, okay. keep forgetting my questions. Don't worry, take your time. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions, then go, go for it as well. Yep. Oh, stretch. <laughs> <laughs> you and stretching over here, you can't see it. But he's like doing his all like Mr. Demonte workout. My what? <laughs> Mr. Demonte workout, you know. You know. Okay, oh yeah. So, uh, COVID, right? COVID. I feel like a lot of like the stuff that you talked about uh -huh. like happened like... Like, did it happen during COVID or like before COVID? It happened during COVID. Yeah, yeah, I felt like COVID like sent us like a different dimension. Yeah. No, actually, yeah, I can I can highlight that. So like literally like honestly, I didn't cheat as much. I, I, I didn't cheat as much as other some of my peers. Did I cheat more during... now than COVID? <laughs> okay, thanks, Ewan. Um, I know a lot of cheating happened during um online school, and I'm not above that. I did a little bit of it, but I like to think that I didn't do as much as other students. I did. And I'd like to say that, going on a little bit of a tangent, um, to be honest, the expectation of academics is so high Arcadia that like it's kind of getting to a point where you can't imagine doing any of these things without either being super stressed out or without lying in some way. And sometimes that lying can involve cheating. I think a lot of the majority of students I've interacted with, who again are good people because you know, cheating isn't always about morality, have cheated in some way or another in order to get where they are today. And of course, you know, a lot of the people that I know, you know, go to Berkeley, go to UCLA, USC, or some kind of other UC. And that's not necessarily a moral reflection on them, but more of a reflection of the circumstances that we all have to do in order to get to our Arcadia High School, which, yeah, kind of unrealistic now that you think about it. There's a lot of unrealistic expectations up there. But, oh, Frank, I forgot your question. What was your question? Time to cancel oh, those people who got in UCLA and UC Berkeley. Well, it's not, again, it's not a moral reflection on them. It's a reflection on the circumstances that we were put in. Like, how, how are we supposed to, like, achieve a straight 4.0 GPA at the wrong time without, like, bending the rules in some way? Like, literally... Oh, is that why I have a 3.86? <laughs> Don't know so or something. Okay, but, like, to talk about COVID, yes. I would say that, like, literally we were sent to a whole entire other, like, world with COVID. Like, honestly... I don't know whether Dylan Chan's victim would have spoken out if they didn't feel comfortable being outside of school for so long. Like that, like that thought really serves me, and the fact that I have to like ask that at all says something in itself. But yeah, uh, for me personally, like I took it really easy. On the three week, on the three months that we were off school in my my sophomore year, I played a lot of Fire Emblem because I was really burnt out. Like sophomore year was very dreadful for me. Um, but yeah, I had a hard time in junior year as well when we got back to online school because oh man, I just I just couldn't take it. Like social isolation isolation is not not healthy for humans, you know. So I ended up getting like very bad grades. But yeah, like. Literally, I don't know how high school would have went if we were still in school in person. Like, the timeline has shifted so much. Yeah, <laughs> that, like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I benefited from 
COVID though, like quarantine. Really? Yeah, I feel like I would not be the same. Uh, I would not have thrived in like if I like, was thrown to the lion's den freshman year. You, but like you, that's the thing. You aren't driving the lion's den freshman year because you don't have any and you get introduced to everything, and you know you you have more interaction, mm. social interaction. Oh yeah, good point. Like I mean, you know, this isn't a reflection on your grade, Julian. He, he he's gotta be a junior, but like. A lot of the current middle schoolers are like kind of emotionally stunted. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. That's that's not a, okay. Again, that's not a reflection on them as people personally, but that's a reflection about like how necessary a lot of the school like social interactions are for like people children's like mental development. Nah, everyone got affected. I don't care. That's true. And now like the seniors, the seniors last year. No, you know what? We, we, we got affected as well. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's like how. Are we supposed to function as a society if we don't like interact with people? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah. Like for me, because you mentioned it, Ewan, um, because I, I did I, I I took full advantage of a lot of the benefits that COVID had. Like I woke up like at eight fifteen before school started at eight thirty. But that was more of ways I had to cope with the circumstances of being online school, rather than actually it being like a benefit or an advantage in any way. So that's kind of like my outlook on that whole COVID uh, stuff. Yeah. All right, next question. Damn, someone oh, yeah. has a question. Oh yeah. I can't think of any more. Um, if you have any any questions for people who just joined, um, put them in the chat. I'm answering questions after doing my speech. So. Bro, we should like cancel those people who cheated and got you UCLA, bro. But that's the thing, right? Is that like you drop? That would literally be like the beginning of the whole undermining of our whole entire like system that we have in Arcadia. Oh yeah. That's true. Because remember that like. Arcadia's prestige and honestly the prestige of many other prestigious schools are like innately unsustainable and untenable without some sort of lying or deception. Okay, so you, you okay, so in your speech you said that uh, students do care. Mm -hmm. But like you can't deny the fact that some people just like actually care. Oh yeah. Care. Oh yeah, no. No. But like the point that I wanted to make with that is that like there's we we have this common problem as humans, right? We think about one example of one person and some kind of like broad example of what kind of category they're in and try to apply it to the whole entire group. And this is kind of a problem, of course, most viscerally seen through race. Like people have an interaction, good or bad, with like one guy of a certain race and they project that onto everyone of that race, which, you know, shouldn't happen a lot of time because everyone as an individual should be taken as who they are as people. So of course, yes, there are people who don't care about making change, but like I'm specifically mention that because there's a common misperception by people who aren't students, like administration, by teachers, by faculty, by some of the community that Arcadia High School lawyers just don't care about improving the school. And I specifically wanted to counter that narrative because I, I find it to be very false. Again, my whole thing is that like there in order to make feasible change, you have to make it like easy for people to reach out to people to connect to people to collaborate with each other. And the Arcadia High School, when it comes to these particular topics, like those pathways aren't very clear and aren't very easy. I think we're beginning to get a point where we're beginning to see some of those pathways develop, but they're not at a level yet where like the people who are who want to get involved are fully going to get involved yet. Also, because like they're busy with their school stuff and getting into college. Yeah, melted eraser person. Oh, Robbins <laughs> okay. is not coming Let's back. Let's see. Robbins <laughs> is not coming back. So let, 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 let me answer this here. Um, I, I am coming back, by the way. Do you see people coming back to change Arca to Arcadia to change stuff after graduating from college? No. I might be in that situation. <laughs> you're not coming back. No, you're I am coming, coming back. back. What are you talking Oh, because your parents live here. Yeah, my parents are live, live in Arcadia, of course, and I um, and pro probably will because we have circumstances that would make it very advantageous for me to live here in the future. So, um, God. That's such a hard question to answer because like, there's so many speculation. There's so, there's so much I can speculate on. But I'll, I'll make a couple of predictions. The system that I've been in and Ewan is currently in is going to keep going as long as it can until something really monumentous happens. And as long as we have the shared experience of being under so much academic pressure of being like literally depressed every day, we have to compete. Um, there will be people dissatisfied, people who have resentment against the system that we have been in. And of course, I am optimistic in some sense, I believe that people will come back to change some stuff. I've already seen a couple examples of that, um, of, of alumni coming back after such a long time and trying to do what they can to improve stuff. But 
I mean, and I see that it's completely possible for other people after college as well. But given the nature of how expensive it is to live in Arcadia, and like how many families just like move out after, um, after your kids just graduate, like, I'm I'm a bit ambivalent towards that notion. But I want to be optimistic in saying that there will be steps for change, and it may not come soon. Like literally, we're talking about a system in place in Arcadia High School that has been placed since like literally the school's founding. And interactive with a lot of systems that have been here in Arcadia a lot longer. And we can't expect to overturn that within like, what, four years? <laughs> so, I think we can try to make improvements, and I'm optimistic that we can see some of that stuff. But I know that the change that's needed to improve all these circumstances that I just talked about, like, won't come soon. And it will be a very hard one, a long struggle. Yeah. So, for you, you guys who just joined, um, I just finished reciting my speech, which is in my link tree. Um, and you can also ask questions about me, about my about my videos, about anything I've created, about like Arcadia, anything. Yeah, I've worked you're, on. you're running out of time. It's almost two. Oh, it's almost two? Uh, well, yeah, six minutes. Let's we'll have some more. Uh, yeah. I'm going to end the stream at two, and I'll uh, be uploading it sometime yeah, today, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, keep an eye out for that. Let me ask but, question. But while I'm here, like, put more questions in the chat. I think you and here's going to have questions. <laughs> I need to like improvise more questions. Uh, think. No, I have a question. Oh yeah. I feel like the people who are taking action now, who are like involved with these organizations, like even if they don't come back, I don't think they stop being bad. Like they stop being good people. I feel like they would make an impact in like the new place they're going to be at. It's yeah. Just like na the nature of Arcadia is like, I don't know, like the trauma, I guess. Mm. But like. Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree with that because, like, again, my important thing is that, like, it is about systems, right? Is that there are not many systems that would easily accommodate some kind of, like, activism effort at Arcadia High School. And given the amount of, like, hate <laughs> Sunrise Arcadia received, it's very much discouraged. Like, th th this is something that you and we get. Um, I I've seen examples of parents asking, asking why college students are out there protesting instead of studying. You know, that's something that I know um, some segments of my family have echoed. But the reality is that like social change and protesting is an integral part of how we get stuff done, if we are especially to improve social conditions at all. And like that's not um, mutually exclusive of studying. Because, of course, studying is tantamount to experiencing, right? We experience a lot of things that we want to learn through, hit, through reading, right, through studying. And in a way, kind of going out there and protesting is kind of a way of doing that yourself. It's kind of a way of studying and learning some of the experiences in ways that you can't really do by book. Um, so yeah, I do know that my class of 2020 folks will do good things at the colleges that they're at. I pray and hope that they will find avenues that will suit them, that will make them feel fulfilled, that will make sure that they do the good work that is needed. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Alright. Do you have any more questions? I was just like making calls and you were asking questions. <laughs> Alright. Making a call, you and making a call here. Yeah. Da, da, da. Alright. Alright. Try, try to think of one more question. I think we have time for like uh, one or two more questions. Oh yeah, what's one thing you like about Arcadia then? What's one thing I like about Arcadia? Again. Okay, I have, I, have, I, have to, I have to elaborate this. So, my whole thing is that I really had a good childhood. I can say that with confidence. That I loved Arcadia High School, I love Arcadia, and I was literally born in Methodist Hospital, now known as USC Arcadia Hospital, much to the disdain of my UCLA peers, including my father. Um, so my whole thing isn't that, like, I hate Arcadia for what it has happened to me. Like... I love the people I've met here. I, I love I love you, and I love like all the friends that I've I've met here, and I've treasured all the ex positive experiences we have. I love being in speech and debate. I love being in the quill. I love doing those activities. I love history, but I loved so many people, and I love my family for bringing me here and giving me this opportunity that I know that most people in the world don't have. So my whole thing is that like I'm critical of the ways that our community that our school falls short in being awful and going against all of those things I love and treasure and care about in this community. And 
I point out all these questions about Arcadia High School, not because I hate Arcadia High School, but because I don't want to see it like this. I don't want to see like depressed students come in every day without loving life, without loving learning, with like literally not seeing a future for themselves. I want to see Arcadia High School to be a place where people can feel fulfilled. P people can, you know, achieve high, but at the same time feel like they're doing something meaningful. Not be stressed out every single day, like love what they're doing and love themselves and their peers. And for Arcadia's community as a whole, like, I just want to see our community be so much better than what it currently is. And I know it's possible because we allow those resources that our communities don't have. And that's why I'm sometimes frustrated because, like, we're not using those resources properly. When I, I wish we, I wish we could use it a lot better. We have a one to one student to Chromebook ratio. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? Is that like I'm, I'm gonna go on a tangent here, but like, better technology doesn't always mean like everyone benefits from that equally, and that the world as a whole is improved. I mean, just think about like the cotton gin. Think about like tobacco. Like the development of like cigarette rolling machines meant that like cigarettes could be sold a lot more effectively and that a lot more cigarettes could be produced but like ci cigarettes are kind of like one of the worst things you could do to your body so yeah not to your wallet <laughs> he's actually spying for the smoking lobby yeah, yeah. but all right uh it's almost two o'clock if no one else has any other questions feel free to dm me on instagram um what's your instagram ewan don't plug me i'm good <laughs> You can find you on Instagram for you want to. Um, like I said to some people who were here earlier, um, this is a and a session and it will be posted separately from my video on YouTube and the Instagram Reels once I figure out how to do that. Yeah. So um, thank you all for joining me in the recitation of my speech. I put a lot of time and effort into this. This has been actually very fun. I'm glad all of you are here and I hope you have a groovy Wednesday. Yeah. You have a good one, everyone. Bye. Hope you have a